Hello everyone, this is Al Red Sox Fan coming to you from Al Red Sox Fan YouTube channel. Hope all is well. We're going to continue our evening with boxing and this is our St. Patrick's Day edition using Legends of Boxing PC game. What a fight card we have tonight from Madison Square Garden, the mecca of boxing. Main event, Jerry Quarry versus Jerry Cooney. For the vacant United States Boxing Association heavyweight title. Then underneath that, another USBA title, the lightweight title, which is vacant. Ray Boom Boom Mancini against Irish Sean O'Grady, the bubblegum kid. That's 12 rounds. To start us off, the vacant North American Boxing Federation junior welterweight title. Billy Costello from upstate New York takes on Mickey Ward from Lowell, Massachusetts. 12 rounds. Three titles at stake. Will we have three new champions? You never know. You never know. Could be a draw. We've seen crazier things on our broadcasts. So it's Costello, Mickey Ward, followed by Mancini O'Grady, then Quarry Cooney. Happy St. Patrick's Day to one and all. First up, Billy Costello, Mickey Ward. Both pugilists are coming off defeats for the USBA title against Gene Hatcher, the mad dog from Texas. They're quite lucky to now get a bid at the North American Boxing Federation title. This win could get them a rematch with Gene Mad Dog Hatcher and, pull, and put them in title contention for the world title, which is vacant. Costello's overall record, upstate New York, Kingston, New York, 22-0 with 23 stoppages. Mickey Ward's overall record, 38-13-0 with 27 via the stoppage. Both Costello and Ward have lost once. Costello's 0-1. Mickey Ward is 1-1. One and one. Uh, Costello has the slight edge in power. Endurance. Slight edge to Irish Mickey Ward. Costello will fight on the outside, inside, and he'll bring the pressure. He likes the hook to the body and head and land the right cross. Both fighters are orthodox fighters. Irish Mickey Ward, he's got that hellacious double left hook. He'll look to land that left to your liver and send you down. Also has a good right cross. He does not fight elusive, neither does Costello. Outside, inside, pressure. Joining us at ringside from the Mecca of Boxing here in New York City, Madison Square Garden, S. G.J. Jamie, hope all is well. We had a fight on earlier from Wembley Stadium. Victor Galendez, John Conte. In that bout, we used title bout PC2. It was a good bout. I won't spoil it. You can check it out at your leisure. Costello Ward up next. Both pugilists are in the ring. It is a sold-out MSG on this St. Patrick's Day evening. To ring center we go. Both fighters getting their final instructions from the referee. Costello in the red corner. Mickey Ward in the blue corner. Control factors even, but there is an adjustment. As Ward on the inside... He gets a minus one, so he would have been a 10. He would have been a 10, but on the inside, it's a minus one with the adjustment. They touch gloves. They go back to their corners. We await the bell for round number one, and here it is, scheduled for 12, North American Boxing Federation Junior Welterweight title, the vacant title at stake, the bell. Round number one. Both fighters wing and miss at ring center. 
Ward gets inside, and he bangs that body with two hellacious left hooks. The right cross missed. Costello comes right back. A jab and a right hand catch Mickey Ward coming in from distance. And Ward already begins to puff up near the left eye. Good, solid combination by Billy Costello. Costello looking to follow up. Feints the jab and bangs two hooks to the body of Mickey Ward, left and right. Billy Costello working behind the jab. Lands a right and then a left. The left was grazing. All three shots to the head of Mickey Ward. Ward works his way past the Costello jab and bangs the body and bangs it hard with a three-punch salvo. Costello brings his arms in, but some of those punches got through. Ward continues his assault, banging away, banging away at the body of Billy Costello, trying to find his famous liver shot to put him down. Under 30 seconds to go here in round number one, and it's Mickey Ward forcing the action. Left hook into the ribs and brings it up to the head, catching Costello on the jaw. Costello buckles, backs up into the ropes. Final seconds, Mickey Ward follows up, and the right cross missed, and so did the left hook to the head. Mickey Ward rallies towards the end of that round with that educated left hook. We give that round unofficially, of course, to Mickey Ward. SGJ Jamie. An uh, undercard for the future. Flynn Galento rematch, or maybe Flynn versus the winner of Corey Cooney fight. Possibility. It's a possibility, my friend, as SGJ Jamie playing matchmaker, which we like. That's always cool. So we give round one to Mickey Ward unofficially as he buckled the knees of Billy Costello, forced him back into the ropes. It was late in the round. Ward did not land his final salvo. We'll go to the ringside score in a moment. They're going to work on that swelling near the left eye of Mickey Ward in his corner. Ringside score gave it 10-9 to Ward. We're in agreement. Round 2 scheduled for 12. North American Boxing Federation junior welterweight title at stake. It is vacant. Costello bringing the pressure on Mickey Ward, forcing Ward back. And he double jabs, but doesn't throw the right hand. Again, trying to force Ward back. And he bangs the body. Billy Costello bangs the body. Ward brings his arms in, but some of those shots got through. Costello really applying the pressure. Oh, a nice right hand to the body and left hook to the head. Costello continues to press Mickey Ward. The Irishman is not punching, but he is able to evade a big wide uppercut by Billy Costello. Now they tie up. Referee sits fight out of it. They jostle. Referee breaks them. About a minute to go here in round number two. Mickey Ward feints the jab and lands. Nice job by Mickey Ward. Landed the right cross and then dug the left into the ribs of Billy Costello. They tie up. Referee breaks them. 30 seconds to go here in round two. Mickey Ward right, left, missed. Both shots were aimed at the cranium of Billy Costello. Billy Costello looks to counter... Left, right, on the jaw of Mickey Ward. And the swelling near that left eye is getting worse. Solid combination in counter by Billy Costello. 20 seconds to go. Costello looking to follow up. Mickey Ward on those ropes. And Costello flails away with a four-punch salvo. One of them got through. A good, good round for Billy Costello really coming on towards the end of that round. That is a Costello round in our eyes. We have it one apiece. Ringside scorer has it one apiece. 19-19 after two. They're working the swelling near the left eye of Mickey Ward. In the Ward corner, looks like they're going to want him to fight from the outside. Give the chance for that end swell to work. That's near, that's not where War, Ward excels. In the Costello corner, Victor Valley is saying, Go at him, Billy. Go at him. That eye is puffing up. Round three scheduled for 12. Vacant NABF junior welterweight title on the line. Costello moves forward. Mickey Ward feints the jab. 
lands a right and a left hook to the jaw of Billy Costello. And Costello walked into thunderous hook. He is hurt. Costello backs up. Ward pawing with the jab. And he lands the right cross. Good job by Mickey Ward. Costello seems to have regained his senses as he bangs the body with two hooks, then comes up to the head with two hooks. Good job by Billy. But Mickey Ward lands a jab, misses the right hand. Now Costello gets inside the Ward jab. They tie up. Referee says fight out. They do not. Referee breaks them. About a minute to go here in round number three. Both fighters faint but don't fire. Costello getting inside. Short right hand to the jaw of Mickey Ward. And then a left to the body. Costello continues to punch. Ratatatting three punches through. Left, right. Followed by the left uppercut. Splitting the guard of the Irishman from Lowell, Massachusetts. Mickey Ward. Costello continues to punch. Again splitting the guard of Mickey Ward with the uppercut. And digging a left to the body at the bell. Good round for Billy Costello. Ward st started strong, but faded down the stretch. I think Costello took that round. So did the ringside score. After three, it's 29-28. We're in agreement with that. In the Ward corner, they continue to work the end swell around the left eye of the Irishman for Lowell, Massachusetts. Victor Valley in the Costello corner wants Billy to be a little more active. Wants him to let his hands go more. Dick Eklund, the stepbrother, or half-brother, excuse me, brother, period, of Irish Mickey Ward, is in the corner. Fought Sugar Ray Leonard. Went ten rounds with him. The bell for round number four. Ward keeping Costello at bay with the jab, but he cannot land the punch. Costello a bit leery. Ward lands a good jab and then the right cross. Excellent combination by Mickey Ward. Costello pulls his way in, flailing away with hooks. Only one got through to the body. Good defense by Mickey Ward. Costello again boring in. Mickey Ward sidesteps him as Costello misses with the left to the head. Mickey Ward looks to capitalize, throws a four-punch salvo. Two of the grazing shots get through. Excellent job by Mickey Ward. Ward looks to follow up, feints the jab, digs a right to the body, and then a left to the body. A minute to go here in round four. Mickey Ward looking good from distance. Two more jabs. Clip Costello, ending that attack for Billy. Billy, out of sorts. Lead right misses. Left hook misses by Mickey Ward. Costello needs the punch. Costello gets inside, and he bangs the body hard with a left-right-left. That was not enough to win that round, in our opinion, for Billy Costello. Victor Valley again imploring Costello to punch, punch, punch. He's letting Ward rest when he wants, and then when Ward wants to fight, he fights. Through four rounds, it is even at 38. We're in agreement with the ringside scorer. They've done a pretty good job in the ward corner regarding the swelling near the left eye. Round five, scheduled for 12. Vacant North American Boxing Federation Junior Welterweight title on the line. And they immediately tie up as Costello gets inside and Ward clamps on to him. Ward's starting to frustrate Billy's attacks. Costello gets inside, works his hands free, but he cannot land. Mickey Ward smothers those punches. Costello again tries the punch. He misses, and Mickey Ward lands a right uppercut, left hook to the body. The uppercut was to the head of Billy Costello. Costello backs up a bit. Mickey Ward missed the right. Costello moves forward, missed the right hand. But the left uppercut grazes through the Irishman's defense. They faint but don't fire. Under a minute to go here in round five. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. Even exchange ring center. 
Ward continues to put the jab out there, but Costello works his way through, banging the body and banging it as hard as he can. Ward brings his arms in, absorbing some of those blows, but Costello continues to bang the body and lands a solid right hook. And then a left uppercut, snapping Mickey Ward's head at the bell. Tough round to score here, but Billy Costello out-hustled Mickey Ward in that round. That's just our opinion. Let's go to the ringside scorer. And that's their opinion, too. 48-47 after 5. Both fighters are coming off decision losses. Well, actually, excuse me, Costello lost via decision to... Gene Mad Dog Hatcher out uh, from Texas for the USBA title. Then Hatcher defended his USBA title against Mickey Ward. Seemed to be on the verge of TKOing Ward, and Ward was DQ'd for low blows. Round six, we're coming up on the midway point of this 12 rounder. Costello meets Ward at ring center, and Billy's gonna punch, banging away at the body as hard as he can. Costello continues to punch. Left hook to the body, right left to the head. That swelling's going to get worse with those combination. Costello, heeding the advice of Victor Valley in his corner, continues to let his hands go with a left right to the body, left to the head, and another right to the head. Good job by Billy Costello. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange at ring center as Mickey Ward tries to get his punches going. But it's all Billy Costello. Costello, right hand, left uppercut, another right hand. Ward buckles on those big shots from the man from upstate New York, Billy Costello. Costello looks to follow up, but the right cross is blocked by Mickey Ward. He holds his guard high. Under a minute to go here in round six. Big round for Billy Costello. Ward tries to rally. Ward, right hand, left of the body, left hook to the jaw of Billy Costello. Billy Costello buckles, goes back into the ropes. Under 30 seconds, Mickey Ward opening up. Banging away at Billy Costello on the ropes. Referee looking on. Final moments. Costello looks to fight off the ropes. And he lands a left and then a right into the ribs of Mickey Ward. So Ward rallied in a huge way. And in our eyes, he just stole that round. Rocking Billy Costello like a hurricane. Ringside score gave the round to Billy Costello. We give it to Mickey Ward. We have it even after six. The ringside score has Billy Costello up by two. We thought Mickey Ward did enough towards the end of that round, landing a, the big combination, hurting Costello. And again, as soon as Ward sits on his stool... They are working that end swell around the left eye where the swelling is at its worst. Victor Valley telling Billy, you're safer on the inside. Stay there and bang. Round 7, scheduled for 12. Ward on the outside. Costello trying to get in. He does. Ward ties him up. Referee breaks them. Costello works his way in, missed with the right hand to the head, but drives the left hook into the ribs of Mickey Ward. Costello continues to work on the inside with a rat attack body attack. Ward cannot deter him. Costello throws. Ward keeps his arms in tight. Those punches to the body were blocked by Mickey Ward, but Costello continues to punch. A 1-2 on the inside to the head of Mickey Ward, grazing shots but scoring. Costello bangs the body. Again, Ward keeping his guard tight, but some of those punches are getting underneath the elbows of Mickey Ward as Costello works the rib cage. Ward slide steps, lands a jab, and then the right hand. That was a nice combination by Mickey Ward. Costello not giving the Irishman a chance to breathe. He bores in and he bangs the body with a three-punch rat-a-tat attack. Left, right, left into the ribs of Mickey Ward. Final seconds, Ward looks to punch, and he doubles up on the left hook to the body of Billy Costello. That was a good sustained attacking round by Billy Costello. Didn't always land, but he kept the pressure on Mickey Ward. 
Costello breathing heavily in his corner. He's he's extended a lot of energy in this bout as we approach round eight. Ringside score gave the round to Billy Costello. So did we. They have Costello up by three. We have Billy up by one. Mickey Ward again. Dick Eklund, his brother in his corner, wants Ward to be more active from distance. Again, Victor Valley is telling Billy, bore in, bore in, bang, bang, bang. Round eight, scheduled for 12. Costello lands on the belt line. Referee gives him a slight warning. Costello doesn't care. He's staying inside, roughing up Mickey Ward, forcing him back. And he levels the body again. He is throwing to the body and hard. Ward keeps his guard in tight. Not all the punches get through, but enough of them are getting under the elbow of Mickey Ward. Costello comes up to the head. Ward blocks that punch. No counter in retaliation. Ward slides away from the ropes, back towards ring center. Beautiful combination by Irish Mickey Ward. Left right to the jaw of Billy Costello, and then a left right to the body. Ward lands another jab in a right hand. Both fighters faint. They tie up. Now they break. Under a minute to go here in round eight. Costello works his way through the jab. He throws to the head. Ward ducks underneath both those shots coming up countering. And Ward lands a right cross and a left hook to the jaw of Billy Costello. Costello undeterred. Bangs away on the inside. Three punches to the face of Mickey Ward. That swelling is going to get worse. Final moments of round eight. They tie up and the bell sounds. So Costello tried to rally, but I don't think it was enough. A frustrated Billy Costello, a tired Billy Costello goes back to the stool, sits down, and Victor Valley is giving Billy an earful. Victor Valley will also be in the corner of Jerry Quarry. I'm um, sorry, of Jerry Cooney in the main event. Twelve rounds, USBA heavyweight title, vacated title. Rocky Marciano vacated the title upon fighting Gene Tunney for the world championship. Tunney defeated Marciano via cuts in the fifteenth round. Let's go to the ringside score. Two points ahead for Billy Costello. We have it even after eight with four more rounds to go. Who will claim this vacant USBA junior welterweight title? The bell for round nine. Ward again on the outside. Costello races towards him. And Mickey Ward, it is a quick combination. Not a lot of oomph on the punches, but he scores quite well, catching Costello moving forward. Again, Costello comes forward. And again, Mickey Ward makes him eat leather. The left to the body, then quickly up to the cranium of Billy Costello. Costello forces his way in, banging the body over and over again. Ward keeps his defense in tight. But Costello, uppercut and a left hook. It was the right uppercut lifting the head of Mickey Ward. Left hook nails Ward on the chin, and Ward is hurt. Mickey Ward is hurt. Costello looks to follow up. But he wings wildly, missing his shots. Mickey Ward counters with a right to the jaw and a left hook into the ribs of Billy Costello. Just over a minute to go here in round nine. Mickey Ward catching Costello coming in once again. Fainted the jab, nailed him with the right cross. And then the left hook into the body over and over again. Mickey Ward is landing. Another beautiful combination. Three punches get through. They didn't have much oomph on him, but they scored. Costello slowing down. Costello goes to the belt line again. Final seconds here in round nine. Costello looking to bang, and he doubles up with the hook, and then a chopping right hand as he forces Ward back into the ropes. The bell sounds. The left hook did the initial damage. The chopping right hand will help increase that swelling near the left eye of Mickey Ward. Very close fight here. 
We'll go to the ringside score in a moment. We gave that round to Billy Costello. These rounds are close, very close. We prepare, excuse me, we prepare for round 10. They gave that round to Mickey Ward. So we have Costello by a point. They have Mickey Ward. Oh no, they have Costello by a point also. We just got there a different way. Round 10, 11, and 12 coming up. The bell for round 10. Vacant North American Boxing Federation Junior Welterweight title at stake here. Costello's going to bring the pressure. Mickey Ward meets him at ring center. Costello throws, misses. Ward ducks underneath. A tiring Mickey Ward. Right hand, left uppercut. Costello buckles. Mickey Ward looks to follow up. Mickey Ward lands a right cross to the jaw and a left hook to the body. Costello looks to bang back. Missed the right hand, but the left hook grazed the top of the head of Mickey Ward. Now they tie up. These are two tired pugilists here at MSG. Referee breaks them. About a minute 25 to go here in round 10. Costello on the inside. Bangs the body and bangs it hard. Victor Valley says punch, punch, punch from the Costello corner. And look who comes right back. Irish Mickey Ward opens up with a four-punch salvo. Lead right. Left hook to the body, another right hand, and a left hook to the jaw of Billy Costello. Costello stops punching. Uh, Mickey Ward, left hook to the body, left hook to the head, right hand, and another left hook. And Costello buckles. Costello, no legs with him, backs to the ropes. Mickey Ward throws the right hand. Costello slips it. 20 seconds to go. Costello on the ropes. Costello lands a right cross, and there is the bell. Big round for Irish Mickey Ward. Costello is fading and fading fast. We give that round to Irish Mickey Ward. And after 10, we have it even. They've done a good job around the left eye of Ward with the swelling. Six more minutes of boxing, six more minutes to see if one of these two fighters, Billy Costello from Kingston, New York, or Irish Mickey Ward from Lowell, Massachusetts can claim this North American Boxing Federation Championship. Ringside score has it even at 95. The bell for round 11. Billy Costello will be from the outside. Mickey Ward will try to work his way in. Costello is exhausted. Ward gets inside, and he keeps ripping at that body. Banging the body and banging it hard is Mickey Ward. Costello tries to stay from distance. His legs aren't all there. Costello missed the right hand, but lands a grazing left to the body of Mickey Ward. Costello, oh, nice combination. Three punches out of the four got through. One to the body, two to the head. They're good scoring blows, not much oomph on it. Costello is exhausted. Costello staying at distance, moving, 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 trying to catch Mickey Ward coming in. Ward trying to get past the Costello jab. He cannot! Oh, the jab right hand and then the left uppercut. And there is a huge cut above the left eye of Mickey Ward. Swelling and now the cut. It is a horrific cut, blood bleeding right down the face into the eye. Ward blinking. Costello looking to load up. He lands a 1-2. Ward continues to blink. Referee looking on. Final 30 seconds. And Costello continues to open up at the head of Mickey Ward. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. A furious exchange at the bell. A lot of blood around that Mickey Ward eye and into the eye. Swelling and blood. Billy Costello has just brought himself back from the brink. Victor Valley says three more minutes, Billy, and your North American Boxing Federation champion. This is a huge bout. Both men, again, coming off losses to Gene Mad Dog Hatcher for the USBA title. Wow. Excellent round for Billy Costello. Referee and doctor 
go over to the Mickey Ward corner. Dick Eklund and Mickey Ward said they're they're fine. He's fine, Dick Eklund says. Mickey Ward says, yes. We got three more minutes. Let us go. That is a horrific cut. That is a going to take quite a few stitches to close that thing up. And it is right above the eye. They're putting a lot of goop on that. I don't know if that's going to help. Three more minutes to go here. Somehow the ringside scorer gave that round to Mickey Ward. We're not in agreement with that. We have Costello up by one. Fighters at ring center. They touch gloves. Final round. Final three minutes. It's Ward getting in tight on Billy Costello. Banging the body with the left and then the right. Then a hybrid left uppercut to the chest of Billy Costello. Ward follows up. Again, the same combination. This time he brings the left uppercut, snapping the head of Billy Costello. Costello behind the jab. Missed the jab. Lands the right to the body. Then a left to the body. Costello. Ward moves forward. Costello again bangs the body with a couple of hooks and moves away. Valley screaming, target the eye, target the eye. And there goes Billy Costello. Fainted to the body, bringing Ward's guard down. Caught him with a grazing right hand, and blood begins to flow near the left eye of Ward. He is blinking. The blood's bothering him. Good jab and a right hand. Catch Mickey Ward moving forward. Final 49 seconds. Fighters faint but don't fire. Billy Costello again aiming at that bloody eye. Lands a combination. Nothing on the punch. Not as much on those punches, but the blood flows. Mickey Ward lands a left to the body and brings a looping right hand to the head of Billy Costello. And that is it. We're going to the scorecards. Holy cow. This fight is close. This fight is close. We have Costello... The man from upstate New York, Kingston, New York, defeating Irish Mickey Ward from Lowell, Massachusetts by two points. That's the way we see it unofficially. On our first bout of our St. Patrick's Day card for Madison Square Garden, the mecca of boxing in New York and in the world. Let's go to the ringside score. They had it even, 114-114. We have Costello by two. That is a deep, horrific cut above the left eye of Mickey Ward. Both fighters embrace. The blood you see that they're wiping off near the shoulder and chest area of Billy Costello is the blood of Mickey Ward. The New York State... A boxing Commission has collected the cards. The cards are being reviewed. That's the judges' scorecards. Everything seems to be in order. The ring announcer has the judgment. Here is the official result. 114-114, 114-114, 114-114. The bout has been declared a draw. Billy Costello is just shaking his head. He believed he won it. Irish Mickey Ward shaking his head. He believes he won it. But it is a draw. The North American Boxing Federation Junior Welterweight title will stay vacant. A rematch will be in the future. Quick word from the promoter. They're already talking that this rematch will be on the undercard of the third bout between Mike Tyson and James J. Jeffries. They have fought to two bloody draws. So unbelievable. Our first bout in our three-fight promotion here at MSG, St. Patrick's Day evening, is a draw. 114, 114, 114, 114, and guess what? 114, 114. We saw Billy Costello winning by two points. A lot of those rounds that we thought were Billy Costello rounds, though close, 
went to Mi Irish Mickey Ward, obviously. Let's look at the judges' scorecards in the fight report. Well, the punching points, not necessarily the punches landed, but in this game you get points. It was Costello, 69, Mickey Ward, 62. Uh, yeah, they gave Ward 8, 9, and 10, respectively. They split on round 11, two judges giving it to Costello, one to Ward, then all three judges giving it to Billy Costello out of the red corner in the final round. Unbelievable bout. SGJ Jamie says, wow, going to play 114 in the lottery tomorrow. Cleve Baseball Fan 879 has joined us. Is Texas Southern 19 points at the half? Ouch. That is an ouch. That is horrible college basketball right there. How many three-pointers did they miss? Uh, JD, how you doing? I'm doing okay, my friend. Hope all is well with you. Cutter Historicals watching the basketball tournament also. Thank you for joining us. So the first bout is a draw. And again, quick word from the promoter. The rematch could be on the third fight between Tyson and Jeffries. Both the first two bouts there were draws. Up next... A fight that should have took place but never took place between two pugilists who absolutely hated one another's guts. Ray Boom Boom Mancini against the Bubblegum Kid, Irish Sean O'Grady. Twelve rounds for the vacant United States Boxing Association lightweight title. Both pugilists are making their inaugural debut in our Legends of Boxing universe. Ray Boom Boom Mancini from Youngstown, Ohio, 29-5-0 with 23 stoppages, held the WBA lightweight championship at one point in his career. Sean O'Grady, the bubblegum kid who turned professional, I think he was 15 and a half. Look that up. He was either 15 and a half or 16 and a half. I don't remember exactly. I want to say 15 and a half. They lied about his age. His father was his trainer and manager. 85, 81 and 5, no draws, 70 KOs out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Lost his first title bid as Mancini did. Mancini lost to Alexis Arguello the first time. O'Grady lost to... Jim Watt, the Englishman in, Eng in England. Then O'Grady upset Hilmer Kente to take, and I think that was the WBA title also. Mancini would beat Arturo Frias for the WBA title. And now we have him in the ring, 12 rounds at Madison Square Garden, the mecca of boxing. Mancini has very good punching power, but O'Grady slightly better. Mancini has an edge in the endurance, 26 to 21. Mancini likes to throw the left hook, likes to throw in combination of the body and head. He'll also throw the looping right hand. Sean O'Grady loves that uppercut and has a good right cross. Neither fighter fights elusive. They'll fight on the outside. O'Grady a little more than Mancini. Mancini likes to be on the inside and will also bring the pressure the same as Sean O'Grady. Both fighters will bleed. Both fighters are, pretty, are plus one finishers. This should be a slobber knocker before our main event, Jerry Cooney, Jerry Quarry, for the vacant USBA heavyweight title. That title was vacated when Rocky Marciano fought Gene Tunney. Marciano held the title when he fought Gene Tunney for the world championship and lost in 15 on cuts. Tunney was well ahead in the bout. When the fight was stopped. Fighters are in the ring. Mancini out of the red corner. O'Grady out of the blue corner. They go to ring center. As Cutter Historical says, Hogg survived 75 to 71. So Arkansas beats Vermont. There's a handsome young lad up in Vermont who will be disappointed about that. The what are they? The Vermont what are they? The Catamounts? 
the defeat. They played them tough. They played them tough. So that's good news. But a loss is a loss. Back to the fight here. Both fighters move to ring center to get the final instructions. No questions from the Chief Seconds. And these fighters, that is quite a stare down. They do not like one another. The press conferences were not pleasant. They were politely rude to one another on many occasions. They begrudgingly touch hands. They go back to their corners. They await the bell for round number one. Scheduled for 12. Vacant United States Boxing Association lightweight title at stake. And here's the bell for round number one. Mancini rages out towards O'Grady. O'Grady trying to stay at distance behind the jab. Mancini gets inside. And Mancini throws the right hand. It was a looping right hand, but Grady evades it. Oh, Grady, excuse me. Mancini again gets in tight. Left right to the body, left hook to the jaw, and a right hand. And oh, Grady's in big trouble. Mancini hurt him. Mancini looks to follow up. Mancini cannot land the punches to send O'Grady down. He does get some punches through, but O'Grady is on his horse. O'Grady lands to the belt line. O'Grady behind the jab. A good jab and then the right hand. Mancini presses. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. Mancini got the better of it. That left hook landed. Mancini doubles up on the left hook. Right hand and another left hook to the jaw of Sean O'Grady. And O'Grady buckles again. Mancini opening up with fists of fury. Mancini digs a left to the body and a right uppercut splitting the guard of sean o'grady mancini continues to press o'grady trying to move away mancini hooks to the body with a left and right the bell sounds as o'grady gingerly goes back to his stool sits down and his father is giving the youngster an earful a huge huge round for Ray Boom Boom Mancini, this crowd is about a 50-50 split here in the garden. Unbelievable. The crowd is abuzzed. Wow, I give that a 10-8 round. Ringside score, a 10-9 Mancini. O'Grady's father asking him, are you okay? He says, yes. Then show me something, son. In the Mancini corner, they want the pressure. They want the pressure. We await round two. Can O'Grady turn the tide of battle here? The bell for round two. Mancini's going to try to work his way inside. O'Grady keeps him at bay with the jab, but cannot land the right cross. Mancini gets underneath the jab, coming up, banging the body. The right hand missed to the head, though, as he was a right-left hook to the body. Both fighters faint. Mancini gets inside. O'Grady sidesteps him. No counter by O'Grady. Now O'Grady throws two jabs. O'Grady looks to follow up. Throws the jab. Missed the right hand. Missed the left hook to the head of Mancini. O'Grady continues to punch. A good combination of one, two, three. Left jab, right hand, left hook. Mancini blinks, but there's no blood. O'Grady faints a jab and nails Mancini with a right cross as he moves forward. Mancini buckles. What a war we have at the Garden. Under a minute to go. O'Grady looks to follow up. He bangs a left and a right to the body. The left uppercut was blocked by Mancini. Mancini fires back with a left to the body and a right uppercut but that was a Sean O'Grady round he looks completely rejuvenated after the beating he took in the first he dished out he dished out good punishment against Mancini Mancini goes to his corner they start working the end swell right away near both eyes of Ray Boom Boom Mancini round three scheduled for 12 both fighters off the stool. Both fighters on the outside looking to feint one another in. But it's O'Grady who lands two jabs. Now Mancini gets within punching distance. Bangs the body and goes to the head. Excellent job by Ray Boom Boom Mancini. Feinting the jab. Work 
in close, left right to the body, left right to the head by Boom Boom. O'Grady comes back with hooks, but Mancini dodges underneath. Mancini comes up punching, left hook to the body, left hook to the head. Wings a right hand that misses, and again Mancini, left hook to the body, left hook to the head, right hand to the head. And O'Grady is down from the right hand. Mancini races to the neutral corner, referee picks up the count at six, seven. O'Grady starts to get up, he'll take the mandatory eight. The referee wipes O'Grady's gloves off, looks into his eyes, says, are you okay? He nods yes. Mancini goes for the kill. Mancini opening up, but he cannot land cleanly. Mancini again opens up, flailing away. He's got to stay calm. O'Grady survives for the moment, but Mancini continues to cut the ring off on Sean O'Grady. Overhand right clips Sean O'Grady. Then the left into the ribs and the right. Final seconds here in round three. O'Grady throws, lands a left to the body, the bell. Big round for Boom Boom Mancini. Rounds one and three went huge for Mancini. Round two went very well for Sean O'Grady. O'Grady sits in his corner, shaking his head as he went down. Mancini wailed away. Left to the body, left hook to the head, and then a booming right hook. It was a hybrid uppercut hook, dropping O'Grady on his keister. Let's go to the ringside score. All three... Oh! Wow, they've given all three rounds to Mancini. I have a 2-1 Mancini. I have two 10-8 rounds, though, for Mancini. Round one and round three. He did not knock down O'Grady in round one, but he beat him from pillar to post. And he did knock down O'Grady in round three. So a big lead for Mancini on both our scorecards. In the Mancini corner, his manager, Wolf, is telling him, you've got him, Ray. Let's make it a short night. Bang him out. Let's see what O'Grady can do. He's in deep trouble here. He is in deep, deep trouble. Round four, can O'Grady land something big? O'Grady's coming right out at Mancini, and Mancini playing a little coy, looking to catch him, but it's O'Grady letting his hands go. A big aggressive combination, forcing Mancini back towards the ropes. Four punches land, and a push also landed from Sean O'Grady. It was a left, right, Left hook and a right hand. Everything to the head of Mancini. Mancini tries to fight his way off the ropes. He jabs, missed with the right hand, but Mancini's still on those ropes. Now they tie up. Referee breaks some action moves towards ring center. Mancini waiting for O'Grady. O'Grady presses, and Mancini catches him with a left hook to the body, but missed the right hand to the head. Mancini continues to punch. Right cross, left hook, and another right hand. And O'Grady buckles again. O'Grady buckles again. O'Grady is in a world of hurt. Mancini looks to follow up, and there are huge shots. Mancini has O'Grady trapped on the ropes. He digs to the body and brings the shots up to the head, and down goes O'Grady from a thunderous left hook after the right hand. Mancini races to the neutral corner. The referee picks up the count at six. O'Grady starts to get up. He'll take the mandatory eight. And he is in trouble with just under a minute to go here in round four. Ray Boom Boom Mancini and his corner and fans here at MSG, they can smell that USBA lightweight title. Mancini goes for the kill. Mancini is opening up. He is destroying O'Grady on the ropes, hitting him over and over again. And O'Grady goes down from the thunderous blows of Mancini. Furious combinations. O'Grady trying to get up. The counts reach eight, nine, and he is up. He is up just before the count of nine. One more knockdown. Will the referee stop it? It is a huge round for Ray Boom Boom Mancini. He has sent the Irishman from Oklahoma City to the canvas three times. Under 30 seconds, Mancini banging away. O'Grady, ring center, trying to hold on. Mancini works his hands free. Left uppercut, right hand, left hook. O'Grady tries to grab on again. He is in serious trouble. The referee's looking, looking, and that is it. That
That is it. The fight has been stopped. Here in round four, Ray Boom Boom Mancini drops Sean O'Grady twice. He dropped him in the prior round, and then he just opened up a defenseless Sean O'Grady at ring center. Could not punch, could not cover up. He was a human punching bag. And before he would go down for a third time, the referee leapt in to stop the slaughter. Ray Boom Boom Mancini claims the vacant United States Boxing Association title. As Mancini has his arms up, the fans here are going berserk. The Mancini fans at the Garden are going berserk. It is not a good St. Paddy's Day for Sean O'Grady. He was wrecked. The power of Boom Boom Mancini caught O'Grady on the chin over and over again, sending him down three times. I think it was three times, correct? Yes, three times as we look. Unbelievable effort by Ray Boom Boom Mancini. He is your new United States Boxing Association lightweight champion. His eyes are set on the lightweight champion, Roberto Duran. Will he get there? We don't know. Duran will have to make a defense of his newly won title that he took from Julio Cesar Chavez. Duran, also the former welterweight champion, defeated by Nino Larraca in Italy. Larraca will have a voluntary defense coming up soon in Rome. On that undercard will be Primo Canera. So a tremendous effort by Ray Boom Boom Mancini. Absolutely slaughtering Sean O'Grady. I have fought them twice in Glory Days Boxing. Mancini was ahead both times. No, no I'm sorry. I fought them once in Glory Days Boxing. Uh, Mancini fought Arroyo twice in Glory Days Boxing. Um, and... O'Grady in Glory Days Boxing was getting beaten, battered, and then he clipped Mancini and knocked him out. <laughs> well, not in Legends of Boxing. Mancini gets his revenge. We'll fight a rubber match in uh, title bout two, maybe. So Mancini was way ahead at the time of the knockout on our scorecard and the ringside score. It doesn't matter now because Mancini's fists were judge, jury, and executioner in this USBA title fight. Let's go for haha's sake, and Mancini slaughtered him. I mean, literally slaughtered him. A punching points, again, the points are not necessarily, they're not punches landed, they're the points in this game. So Mancini had 49 punch points. O'Grady had 12. O'Grady was down for a seven count in round three, a six count in round four, and then again for an eight count in round four before he was TKO'd at the 236 mark of round four to claim the vacant United States Boxing Association lightweight title. All three judges had Mancini way ahead. SGJ Jamie says, wow, racking up the TKO points, O'Grady uh, could be a factor, and it was. And then he says, I had it 10-8, 9-10, 10-8. Yeah, I gave O'Grady round two myself. And I had it the same way you had it scored, SGJ Jamie. As he says, not that it matters now. Nope, nope. Judge, jury, executioner, the fist of Ray Boom Boom Mancini. So this title will not be uh, vacant as the first title fight, the North American Boxing Federation Junior Welterweight title fight, was a draw, as we'll see once again, between Billy Costello and Mickey Ward. So Ray Mancini wins in quite impressive fashion. Knocking o Sean O'Grady down three times, stopping him. Uh, he knocked him down once in the third, twice in the fourth, and stopping him in the ring center uh, in round four when the referee leapt in to call a halt to the action and the slaughter. Now to the main event. Two big Irish heavyweights, Jerry Quarry, Jerry Cooney. 
who will take the vacant USBA heavyweight title. The title was vacated once again when Rocky Marciano fought Gene Tunney for the world championship. Tunney successfully defended against Rocky Marciano. Stopping him on cuts in the 15th, Tunney was well ahead on all scorecards. Here's the preview of the bout. Jerry Quarry is making his debut in our Legends of Boxing universe. J uh, Jerry Cooney is 3-2 and two in the universe, coming off a first-round knockout uh, stoppage of Dwayne Bobbick, who has fought quite, quite well, actually, in our universe. So that was an impressive stoppage. Cooney's been thrown in tough. He's lost to Sonny Liston, and he has lost to Primo Canera, though he beat Primo Canera. In the rematch in Rome, which is probably fight of the year right now, uh, Canera came back from a knockdown to knock out Jerry Cooney. Irish Jerry Quarry, overall record, 53-9-4 with 32 stoppages. Jerry Cooney's overall record, 28-3-0 with 24 stoppages. This will be a pro-Cooney crowd as he is from Huntington, New York. Jerry Quarry... Los Angeles, California. Via, I think it was via Bakersfield, though. I think. Bakersfield, California. Because was... Or May... What was he? The Mayweather Bomb... What the hell was his nickname? I can't remember his other nickname. May something bomber. Um, Cooney will have a slight edge in power, 8-7. to seven. Jerry Quarry will have a slight edge in endurance, 21 to 19. Neither fighter fights elusive. Quarry will fight a little bit on the outside, Cooney a little more. Quarry likes to get on the inside or bring the pressure. Same thing with Jerry Cooney. This should be a slobber knocker. If this goes 12 rounds, this is a miracle. SGJ Jamie at ringside says, On a personal level, I don't have a favorite, but Quarry, I think, will be too tough for Cooney. I think if Quarry, and they're both very good finishers, actually Quarry is a slightly better finisher at a plus three, Cooney's a plus two. I Bellflower Bomber, thank you, thank you. I think you're right, the Bellflower Bomber. Also a nickname for Irish Jerry Quarry against Gentleman Jerry Cooney and also Irish Jerry Cooney. The Irish is up here at... MSG main event two big Irish heavyweights Cooney will have the height reach and weight advantage but Quarry both fighters have hellacious left hooks so we're going to find out if one of these two will win the vacant USBA heavyweight title we saw Ray Mancini win the vacant title over O'Grady by annihilating him Billy Costello Fought Mickey Ward to a draw, so that North American Boxing Federation junior welterweight title still vacant. So far, not a good night for the Irishman. In this fight, an Irishman possibly is guaranteed to win, unless it's a draw. Both fighters come out to big ovations, actually. Again, I think when the bout gets started, Cooney will be the fan favorite. He's from Huntington, New York, but Jerry Quarry has many a fan around the country. Corey failed against Frazier, failed against Ali. Uh, beat Patterson, fought a draw with Patterson. Should have beat uh, Jimmy Ellis. I think they fought in Stockholm, Sweden. He should have Was that, I think it was in Stockholm, Sweden, during the, uh, the tournament when Ali was um, stripped of the title. Uh, he fought way too cautious. And then when he fought Joe Frazier, he fought... Frazier blood and guts on the inside uh, I honestly think Irish Jerry Quarry uh, they call him a pressure fighter a physical fighter he actually was an aggressive counter puncher that's just my opinion which is still a physical fighter he could box I mean don't get don't you know again he he lost to Ali twice lost to Frazier twice he beat Ron Lyle he knocked out Ernie Shavers Mac Foster I think he beat Fad Spencer also. He beat a lot of good heavyweights. Lost to Kenny Norton. All right, enough said. To the ring we go. Both pugilists in the ring. This is the main event. 12 rounds. 
USBA heavyweight title, the vacated title by Rocky Marciano at stake. Jerry Quarry is in the red corner. He is wearing green trunks, white stripe. Irish Jerry Cooney, blue corner, green trunks with the Irish flag stripes and a shamrock on his shorts. So here we go. Victor Valley, who is in the corner of Billy Costello, is in the Cooney corner. In the Quarry corner, it is it is his father and Gil Clancy. Final instructions. No questions from the Chief Seconds. The fighters touch gloves cordially. Go back to their corners. Now we await the bell and violence. Here's the bell for round number one. Edge goes to Jerry Corey as he's going to be on the inside, or at least try to get on the inside. Uh, I'm sorry, Jerry Cooney. Corey will be on the outside trying to counter. Cooney gets inside looking to bang that left hook, and he does. Ratatatting. Quarry left hook into the ribs and quickly up to the head. The right hand was grazing, but a good combination. Cooney continues to follow up. Lead right cross. Left hook to the jaw of Quarry. And Quarry is cut. Quarry is cut under the right eye. So already blood from the sieve like skin of Jerry Quarry. Corey ties up Cooney on the inside. Referee breaks them about two minutes ago here in round number one. Cooney, beautiful with that combination. Good scoring blow. Again, that left hook is educated as he drives it into the ribs of Corey. Cooney is able to cut the distance on Corey. And again, this time he doubles up on the left hook, bringing it to the head after slamming it into the ribs of Jerry Corey. A big start for Jerry Cooney. He's just working that hook over time. And he followed with the right hand. Again, the left into the ribs. Brings it to the head. Then the right hand. Corey looks to land. And Corey catches Cooney coming in with a left-right combination. Cooney buckles. Cooney buckles. Corey looking to follow up. Lands a left to the body and a right hand to the head. Unbelievable. Corey banging away. Cooney backing up. And there's the bell. Holy cow. What was a very impressive big round for Jerry Cooney came all apart. The wheels on the bus no longer were going round, round, round. They came flying off in the final 40 seconds or under. Jerry Quarry caught Cooney coming in with a big left right. Cooney buckled, backed up toward the ropes, and Jerry Quarry opened up with both hands hitting Cooney over and over again. I think Jerry Quarry stole that round at the end. Jerry Cooney dominated until the last 40, 35 seconds of round number one. SGJ Jamie says, I think if Quarry got another shot, well, he fought Frazier twice. He lost in 69, and then he lost in the mid-70s, early 70s, what was it, 74, 75, at the Garden to Frazier, but he was past his prime. Uh, I think he should have fought Frazier differently. Um, he should have fought Jimmy Ellis the way he fought Frazier the first fight, um, and he would have beat Jimmy Ellis. Or my, my opinion is he would have beat Jimmy Ellis. Jimmy Ellis was a damn good fighter. Um, Ali... He fought well for, you know, then he got cut. It was early. Uh, Ali cut him in the third, and they stopped the fight. In the second fight, he was never in it. And that's the night uh, Bob Foster nearly beheaded Mike Quarry, his brother, for the light heavyweight championship. So round one, we give it to Jerry Quarry. The ringside score gives it to Jerry Cooney. I, I thought Quarry stole it with the big combination at the end. And then following up. Here we go. Round number two. Gil Clancy says, keep it up. Let's be a little better defensively. Tighten up that defense. Again, Corey's going to be an aggressive counterpuncher from the outside. Victor Valley says, you're doing well and you got caught. As he playfully slaps Jerry Cooney in the face and says, come on, Jerry. You're better than that. The bell for round number two. 
And it's Quarry looking to catch Cooney coming forward. And he does! Oh, right hand to the jaw and a left hook to the Cooney jaw. And Cooney pushes Quarry away. Cooney absorbed those punches much better. Quarry lands on the belt line. Referee gives him a warning. Good toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange, even exchange. A better start to round two for Jerry Quarry. Cooney looks to set his feet and bang with the left uh, hook. And there it is, left into the ribs and quickly up to the head, followed by the right cross, snapping the chin of Jerry Quarry. And Quarry is busted open now over the right eye. It is a horrific cut, and it is a lot of blood. So the minor cut is now gashed wide open. Cooney should start to target it, and he does. Cooney bangs the body, missed with the right hand to the head. Cooney following up. Quarry is a bloody mess. Cooney with two jabs in the right hand. Quarry having difficulty seeing. Cooney continues to throw. Left into the body, and then a grazing right into the face of Jerry Quarry. Quarry ties him up. The referee breaks them, and as they break, that is a very, very nasty gash above the right eye of Jerry Quarry. Final seconds of round two, and Quarry lands a left, right, left to the jaw and face of Jerry Cooney, and Cooney starts to puff up at the bell. The swelling for Cooney is near the left eye. The gash cut for Irish Jerry Quarry above and to the side of the right eye. I don't know if they'll be able to stop that cut. So that was a Cooney round. We have it 1-1. Quarry is in a lot of difficulty here. He's having to have a lot of trouble seeing. Ringside score has it 2-0 for Cooney. We gave round one to Quarry. Close. Victor Valley wants Jerry to use the jab, be smart, be aggressive, and punch. Gil Clancy in the quarry corner. Well, it looks like they're telling him, you better go for the knockout. That cut is bad. And here comes Jerry Quarry racing out towards Jerry Cooney ring center. And Cooney lets his hands go first, banging the body with a left right. Two good hooks to the body. Cooney continues to punch. Chopping right hand really didn't land, but the left hook into the ribs did. Quarry lands to the belt line. Referee admonishes him. Quarry continues to punch. It is a wild salvo, but the right hand clipped the top of the head of Cooney. Cooney stands, and he bangs with the left hook to the jaw. Right hand and another left hook to the jaw. Quarry walks through it. The blood starts to flow again. Cooney fires. Left hook to the jaw. Right hand to the body. Left hook to the jaw. Corey is hurt. Corey is hurt. He's having trouble seeing the punches now. Cooney missed with the left to the head. Hit, hit Corey with what looked to be a grazing hybrid uppercut right hook. Now Corey and Cooney tie up. They're throwing big bombs, but it's Cooney who has a tremendous advantage. You can see Jerry Corey blinking. That blood is definitely bothering him. Final seconds of round three. And Cooney bangs the body as he spins Corey into the ropes. Referee breaks them. Bell sounds. Corey going back to his corner. Seems dejected. They quickly go to work. On the cut near the right eye. I don't know how much you can do with that big gash like that. SGJ Jamie at ringside says, Corey is going to have to empty the magazine. Don't think he can last long with that cut. It is horrific. Ringside scorer has Cooney well ahead by three points. We have Cooney up by two. We gave Corey round one with his rally late. Round four, Victor Valley says, go get him, Jerry. Gil Clancy in the Quarry corner says, you're going to have to stand and bang. And that's what Quarry does. Quarry hooks to the body, left, right, chopping right hand to the head. He continues to punch. His shots are shorter than Cooney on the inside. Clips him again with two shots right in the face of Jerry Cooney. Quarry continues to try to back up Cooney. 
And he got Ganges. He is throwing and throwing hard. Not everything is getting through, but they're scoring punches. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. Corby really letting his hands go. Another toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. Crowd on their feet here at Madison Square Garden. Corey giving it his all. Cooney digs in, and Cooney rips shots to the body, but missed with the right hand to the head. Corey comes right back. Double left hook to the jaw of Jerry Cooney. Cooney backs up a bit. Corey continues to punch. Right cross, left hook. Corey having an excellent round, even with the blood toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. Cooney dangerously close to those ropes. Final seconds of round four, and Cooney ties up Corey. The bell. Excellent round for Jerry Quarry. He fought through the blood, which is flowing into his right eye and streaming down his face. It is all over his chest. They quickly wipe that off as he sits down on the stool and get to work on the cut. In the Cooney corner, Victor Valley saying, Jerry, what are you doing? He's bloodied. He can't see. You're bigger and stronger than he is. How the hell is he backing you up to the ropes? We have it even. After two rounds, the ringside scorer has Cooney up 3-1. Round five is upon us. Fighters take a swig of water. I take a swig of water. That's a lot of Vaseline and goop on the quarry cut. Referee seems to let it go. First shot on that eye is going to snap that goop right off. Round five, scheduled for 12. And it's Quarry boring in. Cooney from distance. Quarry tries to work inside. He can't land. Good job by Jerry. Jerry sidesteps Quarry. And he lands a nice combination. Grazing shots. As Jerry now looks to work behind the jab and target the eye. There's the jab, right hand, and then the left hook. Everything to the head, and Corey cannot see the punches. He buckles. Cooney bangs away with the body. Missed with the head shots. Cooney again looks to throw. Missed the right and the left. No retaliation by Corey. Cooney is opening up. There's a left to the body, a right hand, and a left hook to the head. Grazing shots, but the blood flows from the right eye, near the right eye of Jerry Corey. Cooney opening up, pumping the jab into the face. Of Quarry, Quarry Leary of the left hand gets caught with the right cross. Quarry pushes Cooney away. Under 30 seconds to go here in round five. All oh, Jerry Cooney, two jabs but no right hand. Final moments, and it's Cooney landing two more jabs. Very good round. Cooney really worked well. He's not the prettiest boxer when he tries to use some finesse, but he was quite effective in that round. He's not gonna dance like Ali. He used the angles, did a little sidestepping side to side, and he caught Jerry Quarry very often as Quarry tried to get inside. He did not land one scoring blow. It was all Jerry Cooney. The end could be coming very soon for Quarry. Quarry is tough. He has the will to win and the desire to fight. Round six, we're coming up on the midway point of this 12-round bout for the vacant United States Boxing Association heavyweight title. Title vacated by Rocky Marciano in his failed attempt when he uh, failed to win the world heavyweight championship from Gene Tunney. Round six. Pressure, pressure, pressure by Irish Jerry Quarry. Cooney again from the outside. Quarry gets inside. Oh, that was low. That was very low. Usually it's Cooney landing the low blows. Referee stops the action. Gives a stern warning to Quarry. And he'll give a moment to Jerry Cooney. Cooney says he's fine. Round continues. But it's Quarry jumping on Cooney, getting in tight. And he doubles up on the left hook. One to the ribs, one to the head, and a right hook. And Cooney is hurt. Cooney is hurt. I think the low blow took a lot out of him. Corey bores in. Cooney moves back to the ropes. Corey lands a left, right, left to the jaw of Jerry Cooney. Cooney seems almost defenseless on the ropes. What a comeback it'll be for Jerry Quarry. Corey lands another aggressive combination. Cooney not punching. Cooney is not punching. Now it's a toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange, but Cooney is still on the ropes. Cooney trying to fight his way off the ropes. There's two jabs, but no right hand. Cooney leans back into the ropes. Corey bores in. Again, a jab catches Corey. Corey grabs on now, works his way free. He's going to punch, and he bangs away with 
Left right to the body and brings the left to the head. Final seconds of round six. Blood starts to flow from the eye of Jerry Quarry once again. Cooney trapped on the ropes and Jerry Quarry lands a salvo at the bell. He was throwing, throwing hard. Not everything got through, but three out of what looked like five punches did. Cooney goes back to his corner. He is tired. Quarry is tired. Holy cow. There's a lot of fight left in Irish Jerry Corny, uh, Co uh, Quarry, excuse me. And Jerry Cooney looks dejected. His confidence is waning. And Victor Valley has changed his tone now in the Cooney corner. He's trying to pump up Jerry. Both fighters tired, breathing heavily. Let's go to the ringside scorer. They gave round six to Quarry, so did I. Cooney had a very big round. Uh, let's go back to that. I messed that up. I had a big round five, I thought. But he didn't follow it up. Here we go. Round number seven. Quarry's going to fight on the outside. Cooney's going to try to press a little bit here. Quarry trying to regroup. Cooney's not going to let him. Cooney hooks to the body with a double left hook. Quarry slides away. Cooney moves forward, and Quarry catches him with two good jabs. Both fighters faint but don't fire. You could see Jerry Cooney was trying to load up with a big left hook. Quarry moved away. Quarry. Cooney steps forward, and Quarry lands another two good jabs. Quarry's looking to set up Jerry, looking to walk him into the right hand. Cooney hooks to the body, but Corey moves away. Corey still has his legs. He's doing quite well. Both fighters faint, but don't fire. Under a minute to go here in round seven. Cooney gets in punching range. Missed the left hook. It was a grazing shot. Corey was able to parry that away, but the uppercut, the right uppercut, did catch Corey. Corey, there it was. He missed the right hand. He was trying to walk Jerry into it. Jerry was able to get his hands up and block it. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange at the bell. A slow pace round as both pugilists look to find their second win. I give that round even. Round eight is coming up. Again, no matter what they do in the quarry corner, that blood will flow. Though that round did give the coagulant that they're using in the quarry corner a chance so now the cut does not seem as bad though it's still pretty bad round eight scheduled for 12 Corey gonna go right at jerry cooney cooney's gonna meet at ring center so Corey was resting a bit it's gonna be cooney firing away first left hook to the body right uppercut snapping the head of jerry Corey. cooney continues to punch doubles up with the left hook to the body they jostle now they break free they're trying to work the angles on the inside. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange by both pugilists. But it's Cooney throwing, missing. Counter shot by Quarry. Beautiful left to the body and a right uppercut snapping. The big Irishman, Jerry Cooney from Huntington, New York's head. Just over a minute to go in round eight. Quarry punching. Doubles up on the left hook and the right hand. Catching Cooney square in the face. And there, 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 yep, there is blood from the mouth of Jerry Cooney. Both fighters are starting to chop one another up. Cooney comes back, digging two hard left hooks into the ribs of Quarry. 30 seconds to go, and it's Quarry returning with the hooks to Cooney's rib cage. They're standing and banging. Double left hook, one to the Labanza, one to the head of Jerry Quarry, thrown by Jerry Cooney at the bell. We're through eight rounds. You have to give a lot of credit to Jerry Quarry and his corner and the referee and the ringside doctor to allow this bout to continue. But Quarry has been competitive. Both fighters, some of their zip in their punches is gone. And Cooney can be a bit chinny at this point. The ringside scorer gave that round to Quarry. Very close fight. We have it a very close fight. Round 9, scheduled for 12. Vacant USBA heavyweight title on the line. 
Corey's going to look to counter an aggressive Cooney. And he does with a jab and a right hand. The right hand was grazing. Cooney a bit slower in step now. Cooney gets it as, as I say that. Cooney fainted the jab, landed the right to the body, and came with the left hook to the head. And down goes Corey. Cooney goes to the neutral corner. That was a huge left hook by Jerry Cooney. Corey trying to rise. Counts reached eight, and Corey is up. He was on his knee. The one knee at the count is six. Took the eight count and got up, but that was a hellacious combination by Cooney. The referee wipes off Corey's gloves, asks him if he wants to continue. He says yes. Cooney is an excellent finisher. Can he do it here? And there are big shots. Quarry goes back to the ropes. He is eating a lot of shots. There's the right uppercut, left hook. Quarry is hurt. Cooney looking to take him out. But now he's a little wild. He's not landing cleanly. Quarry looks to survive. Cooney lands another left to the body and up to the head. Huge round for Jerry Cooney. Cooney continues to fire away. Quarry on the ropes. He's got to show something. He's being ratatatted. That uppercut got through after a two-handed assault on the body of Jerry Quarry. Referee looking on. It's all Jerry Cooney. Two jabs. He's measuring now. Looking to land the right or the left hook. And Cooney, there it is, there it is. He measured with the jab, came with the right cross, left hook to the body, brought it up to the head. Cooney continues to bang away at Quarry, who's on the ropes. The bell sounds. Round nine comes to a very painful end for Jerry Quarry. A huge Cooney round. He decked the Irishman from Los Angeles, California. Wow. So the second win comes to Jerry Cooney. Will Quarry get a sniff of it? He is a bloody, beat-up mess in his corner. Gil Clancy asks him, do you want to go on? Jerry Quarry's father says, of course he wants to go on. And Jerry Quarry nods his head, yes, in acknowledgement. He wants to fight on. Ringside scorer has Cooney up 87-83. That's a 10-8 round with the knockdown in round nine. Round 10. Again, Corey will look to counter from distance. Cooney looks to bang him out. Cooney gets inside, forcing his way in. Corey smothers those shots. They didn't score. Cooney continues to get inside, doubling up with the left hook to the body. Corey seems to put up no offense against Cooney. And again, the double left hook to the body. You're going to watch him bring it to the head and then the right cross. And there it is! Left cross to the body, brings it to the head. Followed by the right hand snapping Quarry's head. Referee looking on. Quarry showing nothing. There's a lead right and then a left uppercut. That is it! That is it! That is it! It was a lead right and then the left uppercut. Blood went flying all over the place. Jerry Corey's face is a mask of crimson. He was hurt. He had trouble seeing the punches. The referee has stepped in and stopped the bout. Jerry Cooney has claimed the vacant United States Boxing Association heavyweight title via TKO at 138 of round 10. Jerry Corey in his debut fought hard. This was a fight they wanted. They wanted this USBA title shot and possibly a shot at another fellow Irishman, Gene Tunney, the champion. But now it's Jerry Cooney, who some people thought his career was dead after the defeat to Sonny Liston. But he is back. He has stopped Dwayne Bobbick and now Jerry Quarry. He's also defeated Primo Canera, the European champion, though he did lose the rematch to Canera by knockout. So Jerry Cooney is very much in the mix for a heavyweight title shot. Rimmer has it. He has already signed a contract. As long as he won the fight, the contract would be honored to face Gene Tunney at the Yale Bowl in Connecticut. What a fight. What a win for gentleman Jerry Cooney, the Irishman from Huntington, New York. Jerry Quarry comes over. to the Cooney corner, congratulates them as they really want to work on those that, that horrific cut uh, that Quarry has near the right eye. Cooney 
Left eye swelling, had a bloody mouth, but he fought through it. An impressive win, an impressive effort for Jerry Cooney. Ringside score had Cooney up by four. We had Cooney up by less, but we had Cooney up. Let's go to the judges' scorecards. They had Cooney up 87-83, 87-83, 87-84. Cooney, again, he, he scored a lot towards the end of this fight. Punch points for Cooney, 79. Again, that's not punches landed, it's punch points. 79-43. The fight was competitive for the first half of the bout, but the cut really changed the tie to battle. Corey had a lot of trouble seeing. And then Cooney did what he had to do, though there were some anxious moments for Cooney. He finished off Irish Jerry Corny, uh, uh, Quarry. I actually had Quarry, in my mind, a slight favorite. Well, Jerry Cooney proved us all wrong. Again, he's the winner by TKO here in round 10. Claims a vacant USBA heavyweight title. So, our St. Patrick's Day card for Madison Square Garden in, in New York, New York, the Mecca of Boxing, is over. It was a fun one. We had three regional titles at stake. They were all vacant. One still stays vacant. Billy Costello out of New York took on Mickey Ward out of Massachusetts. And they fought to a 114 draw on all three judges' scorecards. That rematch, we are being told, it is rumored, and it's pretty much a done deal, but you never know in boxing. Could, it, it should be on the undercard of another rematch. Tyson and Jeffries, they fought to two draws, a 10-round draw and a 12-round draw. Ray Boom Boom Mancini annihilated Sean O'Grady stopping O'Grady in the fourth to claim the vacant United States Boxing Association lightweight title, dropping O'Grady three times, once in the third, twice in the fourth, before the slaughter was halted by the referee. And as we just witnessed, Jerry Cooney beat up Jerry Quarry towards the second half of this bout. Quite bad, cutting him. Quarry had a lot of trouble seeing, and he just got hit over and over again. Went down... Um, Corey went down in the ninth, survived it, but then took a hellacious beating in the 10th, and the referee stopped the bout in the slaughter. So Costello Ward draw, Mancini win by TKO to take the lightweight USBA title, and Jerry Cooney wins by TKO to take the heavyweight USBA title. So fun, fun stuff. Let's go to the rankings. And let's go to the heavyweights. So Gene Tunney. So Jerry Cooney won, and that's a good win. I know Cooney's way back here, but that was a very impressive win over Jerry Quarry. Let's bring him up. He's going to take Joe Bugner's spot. Cooney moves in the top 15. Um, we're not going to put him above Canera. You know what? We might actually, we're going to do that. Um, Corey stays where he is. So Tunney will have to face Joe Lewis after his next defense. Or if Tunney somehow loses again, the possible fight there is Jerry Cooney. That's what we're hearing. And if Cooney can catch Tunney, he's got the power to possibly take the title. He has a big left hook. Whoever wins that fight will have to fight Joe Lewis. We might have Lewis on the undercard and give him a tune-up fight. Let's go to the lightweight rankings now. And then the junior welterweight. So Roberto Duran won the title. He beat Chavez by unanimous decision on our last fight card for Legends of Boxing, which was a really fun fight card. Um, Mancini wins. And we're going to bring Mancini way up. we got to bring Freddie uh, Pendleton up, but not way up either. Well, let's bring Mancini above Spadafora for the moment. 
Let's bring Fearless Freddy Pendleton. He beat Charlie Choo Choo Brown in Philly. I think that was a Blue Horizon fight card. Let's bring him here. Now, this is really interesting, the Junior Welterweights. It's really fun. I always like Junior Welterweights. Gene Mad Dog Hatcher. Again, we don't have a world champion yet. We will. I'm just trying to figure out how I want to do it. So Gene Hatcher has to go way up. He's beat Mickey Ward and Billy Costello. He is the USBA champion. And we're going to make him the number two contender for now. And Billy Costello. Bring here. Irish Mickey Ward will bring right behind Billy Costello. Again, I can change the rankings whenever I want. Um, I think Aaron Pryor will fight. I don't think Gene... We're not going to give Gene Hatcher a title shot right at the moment because he'll get destroyed. We're going to go Aaron Pryor against somebody, I think. It's not going to be Timothy Bradley. I'm not feeling that. I don't sense the excitement there. But we'll see. So again, there you have it. Fun fight card. I'd like to thank SGJ Jamie. Cleave Baseball Fan 879, Cutter Historical. Check out those two wonderful YouTube channels. Uh, JD, thank you very much. A fun night of fights. We start off with title bout two on the PC, and we finish the night er, into the early morning of St. Patrick's Day with Legends of Boxing. Corey Cooney, Cooney the Victor, TKO 10. Uh, Mancini, TKO 4 over O'Grady. And Billy Costello and Mickey Ward fight to a 12-round, 114 draw on all three judges' scorecards. I greatly appreciate your time. Stay safe, be smart, treat people the way you want to be treated. God bless. We'll see you soon. Love you all. You know what's coming, folks.